Hello and welcome to today's video on the Candy Hustle event. And for anyone who is still unaware by this point, this event will be a rune event. Rune events are one of the most important events that come around, especially for people that are from room level 11. And that's because these runes will never need to be replaced, as long as Hustle Castle doesn't increase the maximum level that your fighters can get to later down the line. But let's have a look at this rune event now, with some knowledge that I've picked up over the years. Firstly, if you need to get all the runes, then it will take a while before you can collect them all, but we'll come back to this later on in the video. But for anyone who already has all the other runes and are just hoping to get the new ones, then let's talk lightly about them and what you should be doing to get them. These three new runes can only be used on rings in your squad, and their effects will be based on the fighter's weapon type. So hopefully you have some spaces available, but if you don't, it can still be worth trying to get these runes in case you earn new weapon types in future events, and those abilities might be better than the ones you have currently. You could also put these runes onto your djembe or expedition team, so it can still have some benefits outside of your main squad. You might have also noticed that these runes can't be used on every single fighter, and you can see this at the bottom of the description. So just keep this in mind when you think about who the runes are going to be going on. One little tip for anyone who wants to have a more chilled out time during this event, and this goes for anyone who already has all the runes except the three new ones. You won't actually need to do this event if you don't want to, as the next rune event will still have these three runes the next time around as well, meaning you could earn these three and the next new three at the same time. Think of it as like skipping events from time to time to avoid burn, now, as many experienced players would have felt by now. This goes especially for myself considering I've been playing over the last 5 years or so. But the one main reason why I'd actually recommend trying to get to 100 collections is because of the artifact. It's one of the strongest we've seen from an event in quite some time, so I couldn't recommend anyone to ignore it if they have the time available. I'll also have one useful tip for yourself if you are looking at saving your money, and that will be this event doesn't actually require you to pay for a pass to earn all of the runes. This goes for any rune event you come across in the future as well, and that's because this pass itself doesn't really give you a lot of cards for what you're paying for, and doesn't lock you out from earning runes. In my opinion, they would have to at least triple the amount you would get from paying for the silver pass, or in this case the sweet tooth set, and double the amount you would get from the golden or confectionery set to actually make some sort of sense for the money you're paying for. And if you've been in the position of buying 50 cards for 1,499 diamonds, you would have noticed that it actually doesn't make much of a difference. So the additional of 15 or 60 cards you get from either pass will barely make a dent in what you're trying to work towards, and the other benefits should be just seen as little extras and nothing more. But don't just take my word for it, the YouTuber Prologic Gamer also recommended not to pay for rune event passes if your main objective was to just earn all the runes. Before we continue though, if you like this style of videos then make sure you do get subscribed as I have a tower guide video coming out later this month which you won't want to miss. Let's now move on to the next part of the video, and that will be how you can earn all the runes yourself. I will be going through the best ways in earning as many cards as possible and as quickly as possible. Now you might be wondering why do you want to focus on certain parts of the game when the runes are in all three categories, and that's because even if you have all the runes in the confrontation section for example, if you still open cards in that category, you'll actually be increasing your chances in the other areas because you'll be increasing your total number of collections opened. This has been proved many times by myself. But a great example is to actually watch my video on the Little Big Hustle special video where I was able to earn 12 runes from 10 chests, so I'll leave that video in the description and at the end of the video if you wanted to check that out for yourself. But anyways, let's move on to the list, and this will vary on what's available to you depending on what throw room level you are. Now the gem bays are always going to be the best way in earning new cards. While the event is out, you should be looking to complete all your free attempts and the two apple costing ones as well. And I will stress that if you want to collect all the runes in the game, you should be looking to be spending the 100 diamond costed one as well if you have the diamond spare. It may seem like a lot, but the benefits in doing this will matter greatly. Now they have added the auto battle feature to the gem bay, and even though I've covered my issues on this, it will still be worth using if you either don't have a lot of time on your hands and you need to do other things at the same time, or if you're just feeling lazy and you would normally just ignore the gem bay, then use this feature instead of grinding it out or just leaving it entirely. The next best way in earning cards will be sending and accepting resources to and from your friends. This is really simple and so easy to earn new cards, it shouldn't be ignored. Just remember, even if you are full on resources and you have a tendency to forget this step, just do this the first time you get onto the game and you won't be missing out on many apples by accepting it, but missing out on a day's worth of cards can be quite punishing if you're trying to collect all the runes. Following on to the next best step, and that will be doing your portal runs. Now I don't mean doing the whole portal or grinding out every single day, all you need to do is do the levels with the chests on them as this will earn you cards, but this will also depend on either your squad level or throne room level. For me, I can't earn any cards on chest levels that are below level 57, so yours will vary too, but at least every chest above level 80 will earn you cards. 
Hustle Castle have unfortunately screw players here, and I will be that direct about it, because you used to be able to do the portal twice in most events, but more recently with them reducing the amount of time the event is up for, and choosing to start on a Monday, means you will only be able to do your portals once, and the event will end on the 15th, one day before the portal reopen again. So this will be even more important to do as many levels as possible, especially above level 80 if you're able to get that far. The next best activities will be up to you on what you think is best, and that will be between the Cathedral, Lighthouse, Hustle Island and Arena. For me, I would say the best out of the four would still be the Lighthouse, and the reason for this above the others isn't because you can grind this out, it's because you will always have some easy people to fight every time it's refreshed. So for the time that this event is out, I would actually fight the three weakest people and then refresh your matchup, and keep to this process of fighting the three weakest and refresh. This isn't going to be ideal for the lighthouse rankings, but the rune events are so important it's going to be worth doing it this way for now. Now between the Cathedral, Hustle Island and Arena, I would say this part is optional depending on what you're good at. So let's say it's all unlocked and you're able to do all three of them well, then I would have to say doing your arena will be your best bet to do. You can only get cards for winning your arena fights and this still won't be every single time, so as long as more times than not that you can win 4 out of your 5 fights, then I would personally do this. If however you wasn't able to do well in your arenas, then for now I would focus on your cathedral first, but only if you're happy to play this on the normal difficulty, and the reason for this is because, in my experience, I'm able to rush through these levels by not reading what each blessing would do for my team, and just randomly accepting whatever's there in front of me. This will vary for most people, but I find you can only do this properly on the normal difficulty, so if you're someone who is determined to only do this on the hard or nightmare difficulty, this will take you much longer to do, and make the Hustle Island a better choice for you. The Hustle Island is something that can be grinded, and it does earn you a nice amount of resources and items at the same time. But I find this does drain your apples too quickly, so make sure to do your port levels first before they disappear, and then circle back to this after your gem base, as you should be spending your apples on there as well. Following on the next best thing to do will be to do your PvPs. This is very low on the list because, again, this does cost you apples, and it does come with some issues with winning your fights. You can do this and attack everyone that's available to you for a quick burst of cards, but once you've done this, your trophy is going to be extremely high and you will need to spend your apples on getting them down again. You could do revenge attacks, but that won't be enough to get them down, and you could leave your fighters out of your barracks, but again, that won't be enough if you've been attacking everyone on your screen. So if you need to attack people to lose your trophies, then this is costing you apples, and makes the returning cards not the most efficient compared to the other methods. The best thing I can suggest is, if you don't have much time in your day, then do a round of attacks on people on your screen, but don't spend the resources in your castle, and leave no one in your barracks. That way people will be more interested to attack you over other players, and they won't even be able to lose against you with just using a chef as long as you have no one in your barrack. Now dungeons will be last on the list because it does depend on a few factors, and even then it might not be worth your time. You will earn cards for defeating the main bosses, but if your teammate backs out for looking for dungeon bosses, or your teammate is just in arenas, it can make the dungeon quite a nightmare and very inefficient for your time. And even if you have a dedicated friend, the rewards just aren't as good as doing other things instead. Now these others should be done when the option is available to you, and that's including things like your invasions, as this is a quick and easy way of to earning you cards on top of your everyday rewards, so make sure you do this when you can. Other things like clan wars should be done too, and if your team doesn't usually edit, then then here's a little tip for yourself and your whole clan. If you know that you're the top 5 strongest players in your clan, then make sure to deploy at the very bottom of waypoints, and if this spot is filled, then make sure you deploy at the very top one. This is a very basic setup without any editing, and it still will improve your chances of winning the waypoint. And if you know you are weaker than most people, don't deploy at the top or bottom of the waypoint, just fill in the middle slots, as this will help stronger people below you. Also, Hustle Castle have now added new waypoints to the clan wars called Outposts, and this will be involving your Titan squads, but if your Titan squad isn't very good yet, then don't worry, I'll be making a guide video on that area of the game by the end of the month, so make sure you get subscribed if you want to see that and improve your team. On the next thing to talk about, we'll be doing your daily quests. This again should be focused on every single day, and probably the thing to look at the most, and if you complete all your daily quests, then you've probably been playing a good variety of the game. The last two things to talk about will be defeating your personal boss. For people that are low frame room level, you might actually find this easier to complete, but even attacking the boss can still give you cards if you are able to take lives away from it. But if you wanted my advice on how to kill the personal boss, then you can always check out my video at the end on how to improve your chances. Now the last thing I wouldn't do, but you can earn cards for buying diamonds, but I wouldn't say to do this as I find this would be just a waste of your money. So that's everything covered on what you should be doing and in what order in my opinion, but please leave any comments if I missed anything out or if you think there's something that should be above the rest. 
If you are absolutely desperate in earning all the runes, or you was planning on buying the golden pass anyway, then consider paying for the £14 diamond sale option, since the diamonds earned here can purchase just over 100 cards for a little less money than the golden pass. Or what you could do is pay for the third option for 2,500 diamonds if yours comes with the first time bonus purchase. This means you'll be able to get 150 cards with some diamonds spare, but again this should only be done if you're absolutely desperate for the runes. Again, I can't stress enough that you can earn all the runes without paying, as long as you put a lot of time into the game. So that'll be everything I'll be teaching in this video, but if you want to learn how to do the advert trick or be better prepared for future rune events, then I would check out the Little Big Hustle rune event I did a little while ago and skip to near the end for extra help with rune events. Anyways, thank you for watching this long video, I'd really appreciate a like if you did enjoy this one, and make sure to tell your friends about this if it is their first time doing rune events. Here's my unique video on the past rune event on how I received 12 runes in 10 chests, and my personal boss guide for anyone who wants to kill the boss, and as always, thank you for watching.